Spot. Dude, come on. How come you're not helping? Why am I the one doing this? I'm observing. <laughs> oh, all right, that helps too. Supervising. I mean, really? That's not bad. You're doing really good though. I really like these rims, but holy crap, this is a lot to polish. Yeah, three days later, this is gonna look cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's more important than polishing your wheels? Probably the job you're about to have me do. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take, let's just take a break, honestly. Let's just stop and move on to the next thing. So, uh, maybe you have or haven't seen, we've been having a little bit of fun with the old Pro R and put some giant tires on it and they've been absolute blast. They've been great. They've been working so well. All thanks to Justin, because his idea, I was kind of f***ing on at the beginning. And yeah, I really thought it'd be cool to watch you break your stuff, but I don't know how you didn't do anything <laughs> yet. But. So yeah, it's been super fun, and honestly, though, there's been a few times driving, and I'm like, man, I really think the belt or something's pissed off. So probably need to go through um, the clutches, check everything out. So we're going to give you guys a little tutorial on that. So honestly, it's a pretty simple job, but hey, you should keep an eye on it. Whether you're running stock tires or these big old nasty 38 on 22s, however you want to put them. Uh, yeah, we'll go through the belts and all that stuff. We'll kind of show you what's going on in there. We'll show you also while we're in there how you guys can change clutch weights. Obviously my car already has it, but hey, let's, uh, let's do it. So we got the seats taken out. Next step is to take the firewall out. You got four quick disconnect, like quarter turn things on the top piece. Then you got four on the bottom piece. Two are hidden by that uh, center console cover lid. Go ahead and undo those. Give me a hand with that, man. Oh, yeah. Math, get. Get. <laughs> All right, I think I got mine. You get. Oh, let's see if. Come there, there we go. And that's how you access the belt on a Pro R. Typically, it's on the side of any other Razor, but on the Pro R's, the engine is mounted longitudinally, so. All the clutches and stuff are on the front of the engine, which is technically the back. It's very confusing. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, at first when we first saw this design, it was like, man, this kind of stinks. But these are really good on belts. Like, these, these clutches work really well in these machines, so. Probably partially because of that tube you just took off. It actually feeds air in from the hood. Fresh air, cold air. All the volume. From the hood in. all the way back and onto the secondary clutch, so. Yeah. So this cover has... Oh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, 10 millimeter head bolts. And then I think six. Yeah, it's got these nice quick easy. disconnect things that uh, it's very confusing as to why there isn't one at the very hardest to get to location. Come on, Polaris. Well, Mike, how do you recommend getting this bolt out? <sighs> Should they carry a ratcheting wrench with them or? I mean, this is the easiest way I found it, just taking a gear wrench and just getting in here, loosen it, getting it off to the point, like I said, once you get the cover out, tip it, you pull it off, no problem. One thing to be careful though, when you guys are taking these bolts off, uh, on the back side, there's actually a little relief where these little square nuts sit in there for the cover. And uh, it's so the uh, bolt can thread into them. Be careful, because we've actually had a few of these fall out and get lost before, so just be cautious when you're pulling these out. Make sure they're there when you're, you know, obviously taking them off and putting them back in and just keep track of them. They also strip super easy, which is unfortunate. You strip one? I have. <laughs> I've stripped. You didn't tell me that. Quite a few of them. <laughs> you did not tell me this. <laughs> also, your secondary tool is right there, clipped in, nice and convenient. Okay. So like we were talking about, you just kind of can't. So as soon as you go like this, this nice little long, get that clip out of there so it doesn't get hung up. Just comes right out with her. Boom. Boom, got her. Comes right out. Yeah. And there are your clutches. The giant Pro R clutches. Yeah, these things are massive compared to the other ones, especially that secondary. That secondary is just a very large outer diameter. I mean, like, there's my hand for scale. 
And that's like, I have larger than average hands. <laughs> you caught me off that one. I, I got nothing for that one. <laughs> oh, all right. I've switched sides now so that Mike can more easily work on this part. But uh, yeah, you just thread your secondary tool in just like every other razor and that opens it up and lets you get the belt out. I do like putting a little bit of spray on these uh, thread tools too, because sometimes or we've seen these fail because you know people put them in dry and stuff, and it just kind of helps keep the threads there and stuff without pulling them. It's still all just aluminum at the end of the day, so yeah, definitely stripped a few of those out too. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're on the trail and you somehow lost that tool, you can use one of the T40s if you have a long one, like any of these or one of these or one of those. They're actually a close enough thread to get you out of a jam, but definitely do not recommend it unless you really have to. All right, there's our belt off, which honestly looks pretty good. I don't really see any evidence of uh, foul play or anything coming apart. Mainly just going through looking for any kind of extra cords starting to come out or any weird cracks or any kind of like issues with the surface area on here. You know, obviously like if you know something got in here and took a chunk out of it or a gouge or scarred it, but everything looks pretty good, man. No cracks. Cool. Pretty shocking considering the amount of load you're putting on this poor engine and uh, transmission and stuff with these big tires. Yeah, because I mean, I've been running the car in low, obviously, when like we're hitting some big stuff, but I mean, it spends a lot of time in high gear. I mean, that's a lot of tire and they are very heavy. If you were to go ahead and upgrade your clutch weights, which I highly recommend, you know, just go to Evolution Power Sports or, you know, sidebysideblogparts.com and uh, get yourself a clutch kit for one of these. It does make a big difference. Uh, but anyway, the next step would be to remove this cover off of the cl uh, primary clutch, which has six, yeah, ten, six, six, 10 mils, six, 10 millimeter bolts. The spring behind the primary on these pro R's is not super heavy duty. You can put your hand on here and take it off and put it on. No problem. Cause I mean, some machines do have heavy springs and I'm like, they're real nasty. Like you need to have a tool to hold the spring or keep that from the cover blowing up. But these are real light springs in them. So no worries on that. So you can see that Mike held it with his hands before taking the last two bolts all the way out and he was able to just hold it with his thumb, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, so. they're not bad. Why we're here, because this is very, very important. When you guys pull these apart on any clutch, at least any heavy manufacturer clutch or big manufacturing clutch, you'll see these X's. So there's one here and there's also one down here on the spider. It's very important you guys line these back up. Basically what that is, is from the factory when they machine these clutches and machine them out, this is basically where everything takes place in its original position. So they make the X's so it's like a balancing thing and also the way all the machining surfaces match up correctly again. So quick tip, because some people don't. I found out a couple people here didn't know that and that's, that's okay, you learn stuff, you know? I actually didn't know that, but yeah, it is. I wasn't trying to go there, but yeah, it, no, it's it is okay. balanced as a unit, so. Would you want to put it all back together the same way. Yeah, would potentially you have a failure? Probably not, but if you're doing this, just do it correctly. Put it back and you're, put your mind at ease. So. so now we're at a point where Mike can just go ahead and push that outer sheave in and that frees up your clutch weights. And like we said, Mike already has an Evo clutch kit and it's awesome. Yep. But uh, if you were gonna change out your stock weights for these, now at this point it's just a matter of taking off that nut there and then sliding that bolt out sliding the weight out and putting the new one in it's honestly super simple and don't over tighten that bolt and yeah. put loctite on that bolt yeah make sure it's really <laughs> important yeah if any of you guys are really debating clutch kits like they really truly are helpful um getting this car stock i mean obviously the clutching worked very very well but it kind of, for me, example, like it flashed through, like it flashed the RPM quick, it just get to the RPM and then slowly come through. Where these, once I put them in, I really noticed down low, especially when you'd hit it, it almost would like load the motor better on the belt and like you could feel it grunt and pull. And I mean, like you could actually feel a difference in the car. This is my own take on it. Try your own self, but I like it. I've, it's, it's been great so far.
And so, also we've had issues where uh, Pro R's like to idle a little bit higher on a cold engine, yep. and then you can't shift them into gear. But these weights have a slightly higher engagement, ever so slight, so you don't really notice it, but it makes yep. it a lot easier to shift through the gears when the engine's at idle. So at this point, once you have your weights on, you can just normally go ahead and put this cover back on, but if you want to, for whatever reason, pull your primary clutch all the way off, it's a little bit different from like a Pro XP or a Turbo S or whatever because of the clearance here. So this is the puller you need. And there's the part number, if it'll focus. And what are those little tips and tricks that you so, got? Yeah. So one of the first times we ever tried pulling these apart, uh, we realized once you pull the primary bolt out, no problem. Primary bolt will come out, which is like a T40, I believe it is. It's a Torx. Um, but the issue is getting the puller in because obviously you can see that from the length of it and the angle, it like it starts coming in and it binds. It'll bind here on the frame. So I was confused on it until we did a little looking. So once you actually pull that primary bolt off, all you gotta do is take your hand and grab the end of this little stub here and kind of twist it back and forth. This is a little insert piece on the end of the primary and it has two O-rings inside and a couple washer stacked and it's actually meant to remove. That will give you all the clearance you need. You can then put this in, no problem, pop it out and pull the entire clutch. So if you have an issue with a crack or a busted primary or some reason you're just taking it off to check other things, or maybe, maybe you're building a spicy motor, I don't know. But also, if you did too many cyclones and you gotta you know, rebuild your engine, but uh, We've had that. don't ask me how <laughs> we know that. <laughs> But yeah, um, at this point, we're not taking mine off, so let's uh, let's start putting this back together. The last thing we're gonna do real quick is blow everything out really good with air and then wipe down the sheaves with some acetone and we'll be good to go. Yep, and blowing out your clutches is a very good idea for periodic maintenance. So I know these are kind of a pain to get to compared to other machines, but it'll still very much prolong the life of your clutches. And also, if you blow a belt, really pay attention to these wear plates right here because I've had issues where that little bit where is it yeah there it is that little bit that sticks out the belt chunks can catch on that and bend these wear plates so once they're bent then that spider will bind up in there and you'll have some pretty serious shifting issues yeah. luckily they're replaceable Yeah, we're putting the old belt on because this one looks so good. And honestly, these belts are expensive. Yeah, there's there's nothing on that that shows me that any reason to actually change it at all. So we'll keep running it, and if uh, something comes up down the line, we'll swap it then. But yeah, these are like what, two hundred dollar belts, one hundred eighty dollar belt, something like that. I think they're over two hundred. But that's why it's important to stay on top of your clutches, people, to save you money too. <laughs> Yeah, always use low <laughs> when, yeah. when appropriate. Yeah, make sure you, this process you're seeing right now too, what I'm doing, when you load the belts in, make sure you twist, turn the secondary back up and load these belts up. Because when you go to start it, it's basically gonna be way down here. So I always like just bringing them back up in case somebody ever had their machine in gear or something that started it. Yeah, and when it's down in the secondary like that, it's basically like trying to start off in fifth gear, Yeah, which is not good. You'll ruin your new belt. Yeah. Uh, basically, instantly. So yeah, put this little tool back. There it is. Hey, job all done. Yeah, that's it. Yep, let's put your seats back in. 
your firewall back in and just go test her out. Let's get past the technical stuff. Let's go have some fun with this right now. Yeah, I want to see this thing rip on these tires again. And again. Yeah, I got an idea what we can do. And again. Mm -hmm. And again. I'm gonna jump better than that. <laughs> that was beautiful. He's gone crazy. That was beautiful. We should get a tape measure out. I mean, that's a pretty good know, jump. Made it. Mike is a wild man. That's crazy. Turns out you just gotta put 38s on a Pro R. Apparently that's what they want. Yeah, bone stock too, always oh, coming around the other way. He's got the fury again. It's, it's so weird seeing a car with that big of tires on it move that fast. Yeah. That worked out well. That jumped so good. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> not what I thought was going to happen. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, he's ripping. Is this the true tire size for a pro Maybe. Wow, good beat. <laughs> Jeez, What's gotten into this guy? <laughs> uh, no, no. Oh, oh. Yeah. Calm down there, buddy. <laughs> Oh, I, I felt it, it going. <laughs> the thing just shreds. Absolutely. That shreds. was nuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> that was incredible. These things jump absolutely awesome. That like, was, those are Excellent, excellent jumps. I have no idea how far out it was, but when I landed, I looked up and I'm like, man, I can see that stake really close to me already. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to turn. Good job, man. Yeah, yeah, it turns out 38s are the natural choice for a Pro R, I guess. It's just the best. Like, honestly, this is no joke. Like, this thing just handles them so freaking well. <laughs> you just flung mud so far, about a soccer ball sized piece almost hit Nick Seuss. <laughs> Got right out of the way, but no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. Guys says it best when you're in the juice, you just brain shuts off, things happen, sorry bud. Uh, I don't think I'm done, I just, I'm in like the mood, I need to just mob the crap out of this thing right now. Do it, yeah. prove it! So, uh -huh. let's do that. You got like two and a half feet of ground clearance, so you should be able to do anything you want. So where am I landing? Oh, dude, down the park. Down there. Yeah, like way, way too short. Dude, you gotta go way like, further. It is absolute. Oh, if I wasn't worried about hitting that post, I would definitely hit it faster. I mean, you just do it once, and the post is no longer there. You don't have to worry about it anymore, so. I don't know if there's anything left out front for me to just bomb through or not, but. Can you jump the fence? Climb those two cars over there. <laughs> Well, do you want to take a walk out front and see if there's some stuff or nah? We can. Yeah. And there will probably be something on that corner there. Yeah. Yeah. That little corner. <laughs> what is he going to do? Oh, man. <laughs> More I snow pile. How do those tires work on that car? So yeah, confused. I don't understand how they work that good. More snow pile destruction. <laughs> He's all right, coming back the other way. Like that, it just blew through that. The tires are so big, it just makes everything so Holy big. Yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nice job. Oh, oh, there he's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the crunch. <laughs> oh, Yeah, he it looks natural. He drives it like a monster truck when it's got those tires on it. <laughs> Going back for round two? No. 
Guys, get ready to move. <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. Okay. End the video. Thanks for watching, guys. We got to go. Mike. <laughs> Man, 38 Mike is a whole different breed. 38 Mike is nuts. 38s is just honestly an absolute riot on this thing. Like, I've said it before, I love my terra hooks, I love paddles, but these really are slowly becoming my favorite tire now. <laughs> like, these may just have to be on this all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, it seems like it's working for you. It Real just, well. everything it hits, it just, everything's calmer. Everything, there's no feedback in the steering wheel, just these huge tires just eat everything. It's just so fun. This is not good, Mike. What do you mean? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to drive? Jesus, yeah, uh, what am I good, supposed dude. to do now? <laughs> we're good. Listen, best part, Nothing's going on with the belt, so so far it seems happy. You know, me grinding the transmission, that's not anything to do with the belt, but that's that was my, not happy. That was not happy, so that was on me, but whew. what a fun little ride. Good job, boys. Yeah, I think she's good to go. Clean her up, get her set, and uh go from there, dude. Great way to test out that belt, bud. <laughs> <laughs> that seriously was so should much probably take her back in. Like, I, <laughs> now I just wish we had a much more slow to just make these like twice as tall. It just blows through everything. Yeah, yeah. sun's going down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, uh, that was cool. Appreciate it as always, you guys. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have said it better myself. Go back around to Mike. <laughs> <laughs>